One the best jade on the block. You know, a big beautiful specimen that you can flex with to all of your friends to show them how much of a plant whisperer you are. Come on, you know you do. Well, you're in luck, because if you avoid all the common pitfalls I'll share in this video, the mistakes I've made in the many years looking after my babies and finally learned from, you'll have awesome jades in your home in no time. Nothing too taxing, just simple tips and tricks. This might blow your mind, so strap yourself in. Jades need water. I know, crazy right? You'll have heard it countless times of course, don't water your jade too much. I mean, they're succulents right? And we should never water our succulents, ever, correct? Our survey said... This is the quickest way to kill your jade and your succulents. The trap you need to avoid falling into, my plant friend, is hearing you shouldn't water your jade too often and then not bothering to water for weeks and weeks and weeks. Do this and it's good night Vienna. So, like I say, they do still need water. They actually need a surprising amount in my experience. But how much Mr. Sheffield? I've always found this to be a bit of a minefield. I hear ya, I hear ya. And luckily for you, I've got the simplest solution you could ever dream of. Water when it needs it. Groundbreaking, isn't it? If you're just about to switch the video off in disgust, thinking this guy is not in the slightest bit helpful, then hold your horses just a little bit longer. I do have an answer on how to do this properly. You see, there isn't any set time we should wait to water any of our plants especially our jades. Watering every Saturday morning as part of your weekend chores really won't do any favours. In fact, your little green friends will be sick of all your helicoptering if you do this and they'll probably down tools. The worst thing you can do is give your jade water when the soil is already wet. It'll turn him into a glutton. His leaves and stems will fatten, his palms will get sweaty, knees weak, arms heavy, there'll be vomit on his sweater, mum's spaghetti, not a pretty sight. You see, they store water in the leaves and stems and give water too often and you've got a soggy mess on your hands. So what's the magic solution I promised? To whip out Mr. Sheffield's number one affiliate link, the moisture meter, probe the soil, and water when it's in the dry zone. Can't get much simpler than that, can it? Forget the whens, the whys, the whats, the whos. Just water when the meter gets into the dry zone. If you don't have a moisture meter, then what are you doing with your life? It's the best thing since sliced bread and my highest earning affiliate link. So follow millions of people and get yourself onto my Amazon page and get ordering. Millions, <laughs> who am I trying to kid? Now, don't wait too long to give your jade a drink either. The sweet, sweet spot for mine is just when the meter is transitioning onto one, but that is nitpicking, you don't have to be so specific. Wait too long and the leaves will start to resemble a nonna who spent far too many years in the sun. What's also taking too long is for you to subscribe to this channel. Go on, what are you waiting for? Just for reference, and please don't take this as any sort of guide, I tend to water mine every couple of weeks during the summer and every three or four weeks in the winter. But that's just me and my specific conditions at Casa Sheffield. It's damp and gloomy around here, as I mentioned far too often in my videos. So if it's dry and hot where you are, then first, I'm jealous, and second, you'll be watering more often. And that brings us seamlessly onto light. On some day or other, God created light, and all the jades were happy. Yes, jades love light. The more you've got to give, the more they'll love you. I've not got a ton around here, light that is, so I keep them in the brightest spots I can. The windowsills of my dining room and my bedroom. These face east and west respectively. I've not got any that face south, you see. Not that it upsets me at all. Anywho, the more light you give a jade, the more purple it will become. Yes, purple. Now, you might have noticed some purple edging on the leaves of your jade, thought it was catching something and lobbed it in the bin. Sorry to break it to you, but this was a mistake. Purple edging is perfectly natural and even sought after. It's just the plant's natural reaction to getting tons of sunlight. It even has a fancy scientific name, anthocyanins. Hopefully I said that correctly. I'm sure you'll tell me if I haven't. Well, that's the pigment it produces in response to direct sunlight and it's also found in foods like blueberries, pomegranates and purple cauliflower. There you go, a knowledge bomb you can use down the pub to make yourself sound clever or obnoxious. 
If the whole leaf is looking a bit violet Beauregard, then your son might be a bit too intense for it behind the glass window and it's probably having a hard time adjusting. In this case, I'd reduce the number of hours of exposure and see how it gets on. You'll know a jade is getting enough vitamin D to make it happy by how large the gap is between the leaves on the stem. Long gaps and it's on its tippy toes trying to reach for the light. Not good. Short gaps and all is well in the land of jade, just like mine is. Still in a muddle? Then you'll get to understand all about recognizing the quality of light in your home and how to maximize it in my rather spiffing online houseplant care course that you can check out through the QR code or link in the description. Well worth a look. But Mr. Sheffield, I live in a box without any windows and I still want thriving jades with small gaps between the leaves. What do I do? A tricky situation, yes, but there is a solution, young apprentice. To get yourself a decent grow light to mimic the sun's rays. And what's this? Another affiliate link? Yes, to Sansi this time. And with this one, you can even get yourself a 15% discount. I've got their clip-on grow light, as well as a few of their grow bowls that you can plug and play into existing light fixtures, and I highly recommend them. Right, this next mistake I'm actually guilty of making right at this very moment. I know, you think I'd learn by now? What do you notice about my jade? Getting a bit lanky, isn't he? And that's the mistake, leaving it too long to prune the branches. Jades love having their limbs severed. Luckily for them, two brand new ones grow back in its place. This is the cheat code for getting a nice big bushy plant with thick stems. The more you cut, the more branches you get and the thicker the trunk will become. Look at mine, a nice thick trunk to make all the girls weak at the knees. <clears throat> but I've left it too long for its next haircut. There are two branches in particular that are getting out of hand and should be reined in. They're both growing away from the circumference of the pot and if they get any longer the weight of the leaves will bend them to the floor like they're trying to do yoga. They're just not as flexible as AGN so they need to be helped out. But Mr Sheffield where do you cut? Here's the trick and it does require a bit of thought. Like I said a jade will always produce two branches wherever you make the cut and we can use this to our advantage, play God and shape the plant to our liking. The branches will always grow out in the direction the leaves just underneath where you made the cut are facing. So if I was to cut here, a branch would grow down towards the floor and another would grow up into the sky. Look at this branch as an example. Look how the branches have grown in the same direction as the leaves directly below them. So I'm going to make my cuts here and here so that the new branches will grow in that direction and it should balance the plant out nicely. Now you don't have to think about it too hard if you don't want to. Life's far too short and we've got kids to try and stop burning the house down. Just cut back any leggy stems and it should sort itself out. If you're not happy with the growth after that, then you can always cut again. You won't hurt it, I promise. The beauty of this, of course, is that you now have three plants. Yes, don't chuck them in the bin, that's a waste. Make new life and give them away as thrifty Christmas presents. You've got two options here. Propagate the stems or the leaves. Yep, a brand new plant will grow out of just that one leaf. Crazy, I know. The trouble is, it will take an absolute age. I'm talking years and years before you get something that resembles anything like a plant. And I always run out of patience. It's a treacherous journey getting it from rooted leaf to full plant. Don't get me wrong, it's fun, but the success rate is lower in my opinion. You'll get the roots, but will we get the plant? The struggle is real, you've been warned. So I just tend to propagate the stem pieces. You get less bang for your buck, of course, but you'll have a plant in no time. And it's a simple process too. Remove the lower leaves of the stem and stick it into some soil. Water and slap it somewhere bright and your work is done. Don't mess around with water or sphagnum moss or perlite. Soil will do a job perfectly fine for these bad boys. And in true Blue Peter style, here's one I made earlier. This is two years old and it's still not massive, is it? Imagine how big it would be if it was started from just the leaf. Just saying. Now, you may be sat there watching this video, glancing at your jade and wondering what all those white spots are on the leaves. Ah yes, the classic problem and found on over 90% of jade plants all over the world? Probably. Well, to find out what that is and whether it's slowly killing your plant, check out the video on the screen now. It's got all the common jade problems you're probably seeing and how to fix them. And don't forget to subscribe.